So in the last lecture, what we did was we basically created this um, layout in Dreamweaver so that this layout will basically help us to put the content inside, right? So next, what we're going to do is we're going to basically create uh, the content that we're going to put inside these different boxes, okay? So uh, the ideal way is probably to just create these as simple texts and then we can basically um, change the property of the text, change the background and stuff like that with CSS. But just to start with, we can also create all these content right from Photoshop and then bring them over here uh, into Dreamweaver. Okay, so uh, bringing them from Photoshop is basically going to bring them as pictures, right? So pictures have issues in terms of the file size because if you just put a head uh, home or let's say uh, I want to put a text here like home, right? So a text home is going to take very less file size compared to a picture that is going to have the home text, okay? So uh, this is the ideal method, uh, but I'm going to show you both the methods. So first we will just create it as an image from Photoshop and then I will also show you for uh, with just with the text. Okay, so uh, for your assignment one, it's okay if you just do it with a picture, no problem. But for assignment two, it should not be picture because that has to be just text and with some advanced CSS. Okay, so uh, first things first, we need to exactly know the uh, size of these boxes uh, to start with. So here we have the header box. I'm going to check the exact size of that. Header box is going to be 150 pixels height and 960 pixels wide. Okay, so let me open up Photoshop here and I'll go to File, New. Okay, so the new file window shows up. And here we need to say the width and height. So width is going to be 960 pixels and height is going to be 200 and how much? Sorry, 150 pixels. So let's say 150 and 960. Now, resolution has to be draft. So just 72 pixels, uh, DPI is fine. And color mode is going to be RGB because we're using it for screen. And we'll leave everything else as it is and hit create. So that's gonna give us just this header space, okay? So now this is the place where I want to create the header design. So let's say um, I'm creating a website for, uh, uh, let's say for a uh, school, right? So maybe I can just think of some basic uh, shapes here and I'm basically going to think of using a uh, couple of colors, maybe blue and green, okay? So um, if you have issues in picking up the exact color that you want, you can actually go here uh, to um, uh, color wheel website, okay? So you can just basically search for any color wheel website, either Adobe Color or uh, Canva or somewhere here. And from here, you can basically pick up two colors. So let's say a uh, couple of analogous colors just so blue and green. So I can just pick up these three colors, okay? So I'm gonna start with the background as this color. So I'm just gonna click here. That's going to copy the hexadecimal code of this color. And then I can just go back to Photoshop filled with colors. So I'm just gonna go ahead, paste that code that I took from there, and that gives me the exact same color. And I'm gonna say add to swatches. Add to swatches, and I'm gonna give a name. Uh, let's say school one, okay? Okay, see what's missing. Hit okay, and so that basically got added here in the swatch that I have selected. Good, so that's one color, and I'm gonna pick up the second color also. Let's go here. This is the second color. I'm going to click here and go down. So go here, double click on this one and paste that. So that's the darker blue. I'm going to again add it to swatches. So this is going to be school two. Hit OK. Uh, this is what I need to turn off to make sure that it does not go to the libraries, Adobe Cloud libraries and stuff like that. So that second one is also added here. So that's the darker blue. 
And then let's go and find the last one that is the green. So copy that, go here, paste, add to swatches. So this is going to be um, school three. So we have all the three colors added here. So we can basically take these colors anytime you want with the exact color there. So first I'm going to make the background to be filled with this light color. So I can just double click on that layer, hit OK. I can press Alt and Backspace, I guess. No, Control and Backspace. Yeah, Control, sorry, Alt and Backspace that fills up the foreground color onto this entire background. And then what I want to do is I want to take my pen tool and make sure that we're in shape. I don't need any stroke, uh, but the fill can be taken from here or basically from here. Hit OK. Not that one actually. I should have picked this guy. Yeah. So first point, press Shift, second point, and then I'm going to basically take it all the way up here, then here, pressing Shift key again. And that finish up so with that. Okay, so that's done. And I want to add the second one. So this time it's going to be the next color. So change that. And that is going to be starting from here. So press shift again, so drop it there. Then to here, shift click here. Go down here, go here, and we're done. Okay, now if you think it's not precisely the way you want it, maybe you can just adjust that. Just by selecting these two points, I can zoom in a bit, use my keyboard arrow keys just to pull it up, and I think that's fine. So like that, you can basically make whatever kind of design that you like. Okay, so here I'm going to put my logo. I'm just creating a rectangular shape, um, like a placeholder for my logo. Yeah, something like that. And I can have a border for him. So let me just select that layer here. Okay. Go back here and I can give it darker, sorry, white border. And then maybe I can just add a text. Okay, so let's say uh, infinity school, whatever you like. And we can just work on some fancy layer styles. Let's say bevel and emboss. Too much of bevel. Let me reduce the size, yeah. There you go, something like that. So you can just add uh, other stuff like stroke, um, shadows, drop shadows and things like that. So that's up to you. Hit OK. So um, you can also add like maybe the facilities, like say, I don't know, science. Science, math, this would be smaller. Okay, and so on. So whatever you, whatever text like you want to promote or something like that. Or maybe even some taglines that you want to have for the te for the school or, it's up to you. Fine, so once we design the header here, and this is going to be based on the exact height and width that we have already decided. What we're gonna do is we're going to basically um, go to file and instead of just saving this file, we're basically going to save this file for web or for 
uh, using it um, in a website, right? So we go down here to uh, go to export and there you'll find save for web. Okay, so um, you might find it uh, slightly in a different place if you have different versions of Photoshop. So this is the latest one. So that's why we have it as uh, save for web with a bit of legacy in the bracket. I think they might remove this feature in the future. So we might have to look for alternatives. Anyways, so click on the save for web. What this is basically going to do is it is going to give us an extra window to optimize the image to be suitable for usage in the internet, okay? So basically, to try to reduce the file size as much as possible and try to give maximum uh, quality to be shown in, a, in, the, in the website, okay? So now, once we do that, and we have a few options here in terms of presets. So I'm going to click on the uh, JPG low. Let's, we also get a little bit of preview of how this is going to look. And it also gives us some extra information uh, in terms of how much time this is going to take uh, to load up inside a web browser. So if we, we look here down here, so it gives you information about the file format, which is JPG, which I have picked up. And also it tells you how much is the file size going to be for this, uh, uh, this uh, image. And also it tells you how much time it is going to take to be loaded up in a website. So uh, for example, if I'm using 56 kbps connection, which is basically very, very old uh, uh, internet speed, we don't have that anymore. It is going to take six seconds if I want to use that. And if I have a faster uh, internet, so let's say if I have a one Mbps connection, it's gonna take just one second to load up. If I have uh, two Mbps, I think it's gonna be the same, pretty much the same. So one second is probably the uh, fastest download that they can think of. So for us, in terms of having a higher internet connection, it's not going to be a problem, but if somebody who's opening it from a far away distance and they have just uh, 128 kbps uh, internet connection, it's gonna take three seconds for them just to load this single image. It is not the entire website, keep in mind. It's just for this single image, okay? So we can also try the high version, okay? So you can see that it's going to take seven seconds to load up, load up this image if I'm just choosing this high uh, option. But I think low should be fine because it is not losing much of the quality. It's going to look almost the same. Okay, so once that is done, we're going to hit save button here. And it also gives information about a lot of more information about how this is, uh, if the image is going to be saved. So click save, and if we don't uh, find this to be good enough, we can actually change this uh, settings again and export once again, okay? So keep in mind, we're not actually saving the original file in this lower format, okay? So we still can save this file as a PSD file for changing it later, but uh, what we are saving now is just an image file. So let me go to my D drive, and I think that's where I created my website location. Yeah, there it is. And here, I'm gonna name this as header. Okay, hit save. There you go. So we have saved our image file. Uh, and if we go back to Dreamweaver, and if I go to files, and uh, I just simply just choose this refresh here. So we have the header file here, and all we need to do is just put that inside this little content. So it's as simple as bringing and dragging and dropping into our header section. So we have the header box here, which is the class here, starting from here and till here. And all I can do is I can simply delete this, bring it down. So if you have CS6 or even before that, you can simply drag and drop uh, the image inside the uh, space here. But for us, we need to do a little bit of insert. So let's go to insert, and there you will find image. Make sure that your mouse pointer is here and just click on this image, okay? So I was under the impression of the old uh, version. Anyways, so hit the uh, header.jpg here, click okay, and it basically adds all that content that is required. Uh, we have a little bit of resolution issue. I don't know why. Why did we went to that high resolution? I don't know. 
We'll check it out back in Photoshop. Go to image, image size. Ah, so we got a higher resolution. How come? Okay, so 960, that should automatically change this to 150. Automatically same sample and hit OK. Let's export it once again. Still OK. And uh, let's go to File, choose Export, Save for Web. And let's leave everything else as it is. Hit Save same name hit save once again so it should uh, save the same file on top of the same file um, it's actually asking us a file here and information here do you want to replace it yes and we're done so minimize here and get back here it has the higher resolution so let me just delete this line go back to files and refresh Get back to insert. So because we lost that, you will see that there's nothing here. Our header box lost its um, div. So let me just create that back again. Okay. There's my header. Yeah, it's back. So inside the header box, we're going to insert the image once again and hit header. Okay. What happened? 960 pixels by 150 pixels. Let's see. 150. Yeah, that fixes it. Uh, but the image is still having a higher resolution. Why? Explore. Yeah, it is the lower resolution. It is the right one. Let's just try with the live view. Yeah, I think it is the right one. Maybe it took the old information from the previous one that I created. We basically design based on the exact pixels that we have created in the Photoshop and then we export it uh, for web and then we bring it inside uh, Dream Viewer. Okay, so the next thing is we need to do the same thing for each of these menu items. Okay, so for the menu items, we, we not just create one object, we basically create two objects and then what we can do is instead of just importing as a single image, we can bring it as um, an image that can have um, changing uh, content inside it, okay? So let me see where that is. Yeah, roll over image. So what happens is when I just move the mouse over that image, it will change its content to something else, okay? So to do that, uh, we basically need to find out what is the exact size here for these guys. So I think it is, um, menu one is 40 pixels height and 230 pixels wide, okay? So let's go to Photoshop and we can actually save this image because we can just make changes to it later. So I'll go to the same folder and this is going to be header. dot PSD. It's safe. Okay, so now I'm going to close this. Go to File, New. This is going to be a width of 230 pixels and height of 40 pixels. Everything else remains the same. Hit Create. And I'm going to create the text here. For example, let's say this is going to be the home button. So H O M E that is in white color so let's just change the color that is it and for the background I can have the light blue color that we picked up earlier pick the color here so alt and backspace 
so that fills up that color there. Okay, so uh, if you want to do some fancy looks here or you want to draw some designs or whatever it is, you can do that. You have the freedom to do that. Now, what I want to do here is I'm going to make the text to be a bit bigger. Okay, place him right there. And I also want to um, add some layer styles here. So let's say double and use the amount of size. Yeah. Hit OK. And then uh, I'm going to make a second version of the same object. Okay, so I'll just copy this. And in the second one, I'm going to add some more layer styles. So let's say uh, we'll add a drop shadow. I'll change the angle like so. Or maybe you can add a highlight or whatever you like. Okay, hit OK there. So we have two versions of the same button. So one is going to have just the text. And the second one is going to have the same text with a little bit of shadow. So what I want is, what I want to create is uh, when I see the um, button, it is going to be just like this. But when I move the mouse over it, it is going to add this shadow. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to save this image as two files. Okay, so let's go to File and Save uh, Export, Save for Web. I'm going to leave everything else as it is. It's going to be JPG low. And when you see here, it might look like it's having low quality. That is because it's a very small pixel. We've just expanded it to a big. If you're not happy with the result, you can actually make it high also. That's up to you. So once that is done, we're going to hit uh, save. And I'll name this as home, uh, just the home. That's fine. Hit save. And the second one, I'm going to turn this on. And now, again, I'll save this file, export, save for web. And this time, it is going to be saved as home rollover or over. OK? Hit save, and that's it. So now, what we need to do is go back to Dreamweaver. OK, so let's make sure that we're in here. So we're inside the first menu. OK, so here, instead of just inserting as an image, we're going to go down here and insert it as a rollover image. So click on that. And it's going to ask uh, to give a name. This is called a reference name. So uh, you can give any name you like. I'm going to call this as home um, image or whatever you like. And then we need to mention two pictures, okay? So first one is going to be the original image. So if I browse here, so the home is the original image, hit OK. So that gets loaded here. And the rollover image, when I just move the mouse over it, what I want to happen. So that's, that's the second one. So once that is done, let's just click on OK here. And it's coming big, why? Something's wrong in terms of size. Okay, we'll figure it out later. So it's 230 pixels wide and 40 pixels height. And hit. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So now to test this, we can just go to File, Save All to make sure that everything is properly saved. And we can either preview here in the live view, okay, and watch what happens. Nothing happens. Okay, we'll just test it out in the browser. It should basically change here. I don't know why. Anyways, so let's just go down here and choose uh, Internet, sorry, Google Chrome. Hit OK. And I will be able to, let me just bring this over here. Okay. So now watch what happens. Uh, the home button just stays as home. And if I just move the mouse over, you see, it is going to change its icon. Right. So what we did was we basically created two images. So the first one is the normal one. And when I move the mouse over, it is going to change to the second. So the same way you can actually create all these other buttons as well.
And what we can do is we can basically make this clickable so that when you click on this, it might go somewhere else and stuff like that, which we will see later. 